Hello, my name's Karen Hatch and I'm the reader for the Draycott and Lem Valley Benefits. This talk is one that I would be delivering at, uh, all at the All Sorts service at All Saints Leamington Hastings. Usually the talk would be interactive um, with pictures showing on the screen, but obviously I can't do that when I'm recording this, so please bear with it. Let us pray before we start. Father God, thank you for your word, which teaches, encourages and challenging us. So in this talk, may the words on my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. The reading is from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. So today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. It's also known as Refreshment Sunday, as the rules of the fast that are adhered to by some during Lent can be relaxed a little. What else do we celebrate today? Well, it's Mothering Sunday, but now more commonly, people refer to it as Mother's Day. While Mothering Sunday and Mother's Day sound like variations of the same thing, they're actually significantly two different things. The, the key difference is that Mother's Day is an American holiday dating back to the early 1900s created in order to honor mothers. Mothering Sunday, however, is a Christian festival which grew from the tradition of seeing church as mother. It's always celebrated on the fourth Sunday of Lent, exactly four weeks before Easter Sunday, which this year falls on the 9th of April. This means that the date changes every year as the date of Easter changes, but that's another story. Its beginnings can be traced back to the Middle Ages, when Christians from all over the country would travel to their mother church. That, that is the church where they had been baptised or christened. The pilgrimage was known as going a mothering. On Mothering Sunday, verses from the Bible would be used that reinforced to Christians that they are children of God, who is seen as both father and mother in how he shows care and love to all his people. The tradition continued and gained popularity in the 16th century in the United Kingdom. And during the 18th and 19th centuries, after a certain age, children would leave their parents and go into service, often a long way from home. 
Boys would be apprenticed to a master to learn a trade and girls would go into service in a large household, a bit like Downton Abbey, for example. On Mothering Sunday, they would be allowed to go home. In fact, they would have a whole day off, which wasn't usual, and they would make a pilgrimage to their mother church. The body of the church that had baptised them, seen them survive through infancy, then go out into the world. But it also allowed them to visit their families, taking bunches of flowers and treats, such as a Simnel cake, making Mothering Sunday a much anticipated holiday event. Over time, Mothering Sunday became, began to become less popular as society underwent many changes, especially after the First and Second World Wars, and the days of going into service became much less common. On Mother's Day, we celebrate mothers, but for some, this is very difficult and painful. Perhaps their mother has died and there is still unprocessed grief. Or maybe they never knew their mother or the relationship with mother was difficult or painful. Family life is not always happy, uncomplicated and loving. Our Bible readings for this Mothering Sunday also do not talk of uncomplicated and ha happy family life, but they do talk of new families. The reading from Exodus tells us of a Lev Levite woman who was forced to hide her child away, as Pharaoh had ordered that all male Hebrew children must be cast into the River Nile and killed because he was afraid that there were far too many Hebrew slaves and he feared that they would one day rise up against him and his army. The baby's mother has to watch another woman, another woman who herself was childless, rescue him from the bulrushes and claim him as her child. Pharaoh's daughter knew that he was one of the Hebrew babies and she felt sorry for him. She called him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. In order to save her son, the birth mother makes a heartbreaking sacrifice. She lovingly gives him up to Pharaoh's daughter, who becomes the mother of a child of a different race, culture and faith. A new family is formed. Both women are showing so much love and compassion by their actions. The Gospel reading from St John is part of the crucifixion story and also tells of a new family. We hear that near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved nearby, he said to her, woman, this is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. In just five sentences, we hear of a new family emerging, a new Christian community at the request of Jesus whilst he was dying on the cross. In the reading, we hear of a mother's excruciatingly painful parting from her son. Jesus's mother had known about pain throughout her son's life. She had given birth many miles away from home in a stable. She'd been forced to become a refugee in Egypt. And as his, as, sorry, as his life was threatened by a king who wanted to kill him. And as he started his adult ministry, she had to watch as people misunderstood his message and threatened to stone him on more than one occasion. Now she was standing at the foot of the cross, watching him die in the most cruel way for a crime that he had not committed. I cannot imagine the depth of pain that she was feeling as a mother watching her son die and not being able to stop it. As a mother, I have agonized and worried about my daughter, Louise, many times, especially when she has been very ill. 
even though she is a grown woman now, I still worry about her, especially every time she gets on her horse. It's all part of being a parent. As Mary stands there at the foot of the cross, this new family is created. As Jesus asks, asks him to, the disciple whom he loved took Mary, the mother of Jesus, into his home. Mary and the disciple responded to Jesus's request and comforted each other. And I'm sure they often spoke of Jesus and what they could do to continue to spread his message and his vision. They probably did not really understand that Jesus would be raised from the dead two days later. On this Mothering Sunday, let us remember that we, the church community, are also a family. We are, in fact, blood relatives through the blood of Jesus that was poured out on the cross for all of us. Jesus' death puts us right with God. This in no way takes away from us the love, gratitude and thanksgiving that we should offer to our own mothers, both living and no longer with us. But let us give thanks for our mother church, where we can find comfort, encouragement, support and love in abundance. We are called to reflect the mothering and fathering of God and to spread God's word and his love to tell others the good news of Easter that will be here again in four weeks. Amen. <laughs>